Hi guys. Okay, we are going to go over day five of your packet, which should have been Friday, but because we had Monday off, it will be today's work. So it looks like you guys have a math task, um, a math worksheet, multiplying by nines, which are a little big, but hopefully we'll make it a little bit easier today. And then you have your fluency, which you've had. Okay, so we will start with your math task. It's You have Thai and Cal, so I just made a chart to separate the two so I can keep them in track. Ty works nine hours a day and earns six dollars an hour. So what I did was I wrote Ty works nine hours times six dollars. Cal works six hours a day and earns nine dollars an hour. As you can tell, they have the same numbers. So all they really did was use the commutative property in order to trick you. But because we separated them and we're keeping them in order, it's going to help us kind of understand it a little better. If they both work five days, who earns more money? Who works longer? explain. So um, Ty works nine hours a day and he gets six dollars per hour. So when we multiply that we should get you can do 10 times 6 and that would be 60 and then you should just subtract 1 6 from that because we actually only need nine sixes. So if I subtract 60 minus 6 I put 60 in my head subtract 6. 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54. So I know 9 times 6 equals 54. The good thing about this is it is the commutative property. So we have the exact same numbers over here. They're just in a different order. And remember, when we're multiplying, order does not matter. So 6 times $9 is still going to give you $54. So it says, who earns more money? Well, it looks like they earn the same amount of money. So down here, I'm going to put same so I don't forget. Oh. And then they want you, it's kind of a two-part question. It says, who works longer, though? So even though the numbers are the same, they are in a different order. So as you can see, Ty works nine hours a day. And then Cal works six hours a day. They both work five days. But who works longer would actually be Ty because we need to figure that out. So they work five days a week. And I know he's going to work nine hours, right? And then over here, I know that Cal works um, six hours a day, and he's going to work five days a week. So if I multiply by fives, all I'm going to do is put six fingers up and count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So he's going to work 30 hours. And let's make him a little bigger so he kind of looks like them. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to put nine fingers up and multiply by five, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So he actually works 45 hours. So it's a little bit confusing because Ty does actually work more. But as you can see, Cal gets more money per hour. So each hour Ty works, he's only getting $6. So he has to work more hours to kind of make up for that. So he gets the same amount of money. Whereas Cal, he gets $9. So he doesn't really have to work as many hours. But because he's getting more and he's getting less, it kind of evens out to make it the same amount of money at the end of the day. But Ty would work more hours. So I'm going to put Ty works longer. Um, and that's it. All they really wanted you to see was the commutative property and that they kind of make up for the differences. Even though they have the same amount of money, Ty works longer because his dollar value is more, even though they're switched order. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If not, just go ahead and comment in this video. And then today you're going to multiply by nines, which nines are kind of easy if you remember our nine trick, where you put 10 fingers up and you count over the fingers by how many you're multiplying, or they have this strategy you can use here. So it says you can multiply the number 10 and then subtract the number to find a new fact. So for example, they have 7 times 9, but they're saying if you multiply 7 times 10, which they're giving you one more seven than you need because they only need nine here, but they're saying, okay, just go ahead and multiply by 10, which if you multiply by 10, you get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. But because we have one more seven than we need, they're saying, okay, once you get to 70, go ahead and subtract one of those sevens because I gave you one more. And it would take you down if you subtract, put 70 in your head and subtract seven, 
would be 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63. So 9 times 7 would actually be 63. You can also put 10 fingers up. Starting at your right pinky, you would count over 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And on that 7th one, you're going to keep that finger down. And it shows you you have 6 on one side of the finger and 3 on the other. So it would give you 63. Um, if I can, I'll find a video showing how to do that and hopefully link it in here because I think that's going to be the easiest to do. Okay, so um, here all they want you to do is multiply. You can use groups, you can use repeated addition, you can use a number line, you can use whatever you need to do. Um, for here, for fives, fives are just easiest to count on your finger, so I would put nine fingers up and we're going to count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Okay. Um, and then let's try 9 times 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 3 groups. And we're going to put 9 inside each group. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is one strategy. So you can do groups and then just count these up. So here's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So the cool thing about this is they are going to have these more than once. So as you can see, you have 9 times 3 over here. Remember. As long as they have the same number, you're going to get the same answer because of the commutative property. It does not matter which order you multiply because you're going to get the same answer. So either way, we have a 9 and a 3. We know the answer is going to be 27. We also have one over here, so your answer will be 27. So um, I'm going to, this is what I do for my 9. So we have 9 times 3 right here, and I notice. This is 9 times 4, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this group. I'm going to add one more. So now I have four groups of 9. So I know the, these three are 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So I know 9 times 4 is 36, and I'm going to look around. Do I have any other 9 times 4s? right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this over here and I know the answer is 36. Okay. So then I have my 9 times 5, which I, what I would do is I would add another oh sorry guys. I would add another group which gives me 9 times 5. Then I'm going to move on to 9 times 6, so I'm going to add another group. And I know because 9 times 5 is 45, so if I add all of these up, it should be 45. Let's see. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So any one that says 9 times 6 should equal 54. So let's go through. Here's another 9 times 6. That's going to equal 54. Now I can do 9 times 7. Remember, all I'm going to do is add another group. That gives me 7 because I went from 9 times 6 to 9 times 7. So I was at 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. So as you can tell, we're going up, so we're going to go up to 9 times 8. Our 7 is increasing to 8, so we're going up one more 9 each time. That's why we're adding one more group each time. Oh, we don't want that. So I'm going to add another group. So now I have 8 groups, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, with 9 in each. I know 9 times 7 is 63, so I'm just going to add 9 more. 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. 70, 71, 72. So I know 9 times 8 would be 72. I don't see any more 9 by 8s, so I'm going to move on. 
Then down here, I have 9 times 9, so what I'm going to do is add another group. Now I have 9 groups, and I know this is 72, so I'm going to add 9 more. 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81. So I know that 9 times 9 is going to equal 81. I'm going to look around. Do I have any more 9 times 9s? Nope, so I'm going to add this again. Now I'm going to move on to 9 times 10, which we could put ten finger, or 9 fingers up and count by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or you can go from 81, and we're going to add 9 more. 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. So 10 times 9 would be 90. Then I'm going to go, and we're going to move on to 10 times 11. So I'm going to add one more group because I go from 10 to 11. So I'm at 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. So I know 9 times 11 equals 99. Okay, guys, so we have pretty much gone through all of them. The only one we had left to do is 9 times 12, so we will move on to that during fluency. But I am going to leave these ones for you guys to do on your own. Most of them we've done, so you can kind of check and connect the answers. But 1, zeros, and 2s are pretty easy for you guys to do, so you can use your fingers, you could do groups, you could do repeated addition, whatever works for you guys. Okay, and the last we are going to do is your math fluency. So they have 9 times 12, which remember 12 is really big. So what I did for my first strategy was I used decomposing. Remember decomposing, we're breaking apart this big number to make it easy to multiply. So when we see 12, we know 6 plus 6 equals 12. And we want to find doubles usually because that makes it a little bit easier. So I use 6 plus 6. So remember, we said these were our twins, and these were our big sister. So they want to take turns talking to the big sister. So here goes the big sister, 9. And then we're going to take one of the 6s to break them apart, and I'm going to put them over here. Then we put our parentheses around them for their space. And remember, we are adding these two because we broke it apart. And then we're going to put the big sister over here, and now we're going to put this 6 over here. Then when we multiply, we do 9 times 6, and remember when we did 9 times 6 over here, it equaled 54. So I have 54. This is the same thing, so 9 times 6 equals 54. And then we need to add these together. So over here, we're going to add these. So we always start in the 1's place. So I know 4 plus 4 is, put 4 in our head, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and then... We can come over here and we're going to do 5 plus 5. So we put 5 in our head and we're going to put 5 and we're going to add 5. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now normally we would regroup, but there's no other place value. So we're just going to write 10. So our answer is 108. So 9 times 12 is, let's write it over here, 108. So then over here, they want you to use models or visuals. So what I did was I did nine groups of 12 X's. And as you can see, this would add up to 108. So we can add those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108. So we counted those just to make sure. And then down here, again, they want you to write a story. I always do like a word problem. So it says there were nine groups of 12 students. How many groups of students were there all together? Probably help. There we go. 
Um, so that word of is going to tell them to multiply. And then down here it says, how do you know your answer is correct? Remember we said to check our answer, we always use the inverse operation. So we're going to use the opposite. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So remember we work backwards for division. So we start with the answer, which was 108, divided by 12 equals 9, or divided by 9 should equal 12. If you did it right, both of those numbers will work. Um, and that's it for math today. If you guys have questions, I know it's tricky because they're nines. I'll try and find that video of someone counting on their fingers to show you the nine trick. Um, the last thing you guys have is um, if you did the virtual learning, what they want you guys to do today is you would do Friday because remember we had Monday off, so technically we're doing Friday. Um, they want you to listen to Shelter Dog, so it's an audible story, which means it'll be read to you. Um, and then you can do any book from this link here. And then your writing prompt is going to be um, your journal, which would be after you read the dog story on Audible. They want you to go to the animal shelter and, ad and adopt Zorro. Write about your average day with your new dog. If you choose to do that, there is a Google Classroom assignment. It is hashtag 040. And you can kind of, you could do a Google slide if you want and show pictures however you want to do that. And then um, if you continue with virtual learning, you have your gratitude journal, which is day five is I am so lucky because so list four reasons. Again, that is also linked on Google Classroom. If you would like to do a Google Class slide, you could do hashtag 041 and make a Google Classroom assignment using slides and you could do pictures or you could type it, whichever one works for you. And if you are doing the packet, I think that you have a writing assignment. Yes, it says think about two stories that you have read this week. Which one has been your favorite? Um, if you would like to type that as well, that is hashtag 039. And you can also do a Google Class slide or you can do um, just type it regular too and I will get back to you with feedback. Um, and I think that's it for today, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. We'll